Hello, everyone. Max McGillivray from Beanstalk Global. There you go, John. I got my surname right this time. John, in introduce yourself to a few thousand people. Go. I am John Papp, and I am with Jack Vandenberg. We are a fresh produce importer in the U.S. Excellent. And, and why are we talking today? Cool, talk I don't know. Why are we talking? Talk, talk, talk about leading the witness. Come, <laughs> what, I'm going to see you in person next week, and I'm oh, really right. excited about this. How, how, what, why? How, how am I going to see you next week, please, John? How well we'll we'll be exhibiting at our booth. Uh, I wish I remembered the booth number oh. by heart by now, but I do not. Don't worry. But we will have a booth, so you will look for us at Jack Vandenberg, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of exciting things. We actually have shrunk our booth this year, so we're going from a ten by twenty to a ten by ten, and we're doing that because we like to walk the walk, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we are all about reducing our carbon footprint, and we know a big piece. Uh, of that is physically a smaller footprint as well as everything that comes along with that space. So uh, same excitement, but a smaller booth to help promote our initiatives. Now, that's a really interesting point because you and I have been to a number of shows, events, uh, exhibitions all, all around the, the world within this sector and other sectors. And there does seem to be a tendency about um, the bigger is best. Yep. Um, I, I remember there was a uh, there was a big company that I won't name at um, uh, Fruit Logistics a few years ago, and it, and it, its stand was like a spaceship. It was so <laughs> big. Um, but John, you can imagine what happened to that business because that business is no longer operated anymore because yeah. they ran they yeah. ran out of money. So actually, but but do you, but do you think it is still beneficial to have a stand and actually to do this um, the sort of hybrid type of working that you have a stand so that you can have meetings of people, but actually to walk the walk is 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 equally as important. So is that is that your sort of evolution as to where you, you and your colleagues are, are now at? I think so. I think, look, like you say, everyone always thinks bigger is better, and that's very much an American mantra as well. I mean, look at Texas, is it? right? Uh, Texas, you know, bigger is better in Texas. And um, no, but look, I mean – there are so many companies, obviously, increasingly more and more today that are talking about doing the right thing, uh, doing better by the planet, reducing yeah. their footprints, all these things. But then you see this paradox where they're just putting out more stuff, whether it be swag or there be big constructive things that for honestly, a lot of the stuff goes back into the garbage at the end of the day. Yeah. So it. You can do, you can do both. You can make it exciting. You can still illustrate what you are doing in a smaller space and uh, communicate that message of what you have to offer. It doesn't need to be this grandiose, like you say, a spaceship of a space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes it's more personal that way too. And you can have a more focus on what you're actually trying to deliver rather than all these bells and whistles distracting people and going many different directions. Yeah. And, and where it resonates with uh, with me, John, is that when we first started talking was three years ago at the IFPA Global Produce and Floral Show. And John, can you remember what award you won there last? Yes, right, last yeah. What did you win? It was the, uh, I think it's on my desk somewhere, the Best Sustainable Packaging Award. I think it's what it was called. That was for the yeah. That was the first year of IFPA's formation, I think. Right. Uh, okay. So, so here's a question for you: the, it, We are in one big global family of fresh produce, and and with some of the other pre-event broadcasts I've done, I've I've picked up again, and it just resonates. It was my word of the day. Resonates about how strong you and your colleagues in America are on the marketing uh, elements of it. But they're also saying that they can learn from us in the likes of UK, uh, Europe and Australasia on, on the uh, elements of sustainability and also packaging. Do you, do you think that is true? Do you, do you think that um, within the States that you, you're a lone voice on sustainability? Or have you got a number of people who are in your tribe and following you on that whole sustainability journey? Well, without a doubt, I mean, Europe has always been at the forefront, I would say, of the sustainability movement uh, since it's really taken hold. And we've we've looked at them directly ourselves. You know, all, all, much of our solutions have come from European uh, companies. You know, our netting that we use is from Austria, or sorry, uh, yeah, from Austria. And then our bags for the grapes, which I believe was the one that won the award that was from Israel. So not exactly Europe, but in the, yeah. the area. And um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely important. And as far as other Americans, I mean, it's it's still slow. It's still not where Europe is today. Um, we very much work with peers in our industry that are interested in 
pushing this initiative out forward, even whether they be competitors or not. You know, we we don't feel that sustainability should be a marketing. Uh, oh, you agree, no? Yeah, it, it shouldn't be something that says this is just for me, and because you're not going to further sustainability if you're true about furthering sustainability you're not going to do it on your own you need a collaborative environment you need to work together and that means everybody yeah yeah and, I mean, and, and perhaps this is something that we could talk about when um when we we meet up in atlanta next week i do feel i i'm being optimistic here i do think there's this uh, negative pressure against ultra processed foods and we're going to have more of a drive uh, for the consumers globally to come to, to the likes of your business to buy more fresh fruit. And if we can in, indicate um, about the sustainability of that, especially to the younger generation, it's, it's going to be a buy, 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 isn't it? That They're going to be more encouraged to buy your product rather than a, a grotty, ultra-processed food re ready meal, that they want to buy fresh fruit from yourself, especially if it's, if, if it's anchored in sustainability. Absolutely. And, and, you know, when we talk about sustainability uh, in produce, Obviously, you have the given, okay, compared to uh, processed foods, of course. But I think a big piece that we have to wake up to as an industry as well is that the type of fresh produce. So it's all good and well that we have fresh produce to offer. Obviously, that's that's uh, first the first feather in the cap. But the next feather has to be the diversity of the the produce that we're eating. Uh, we are at a dangerous point, I believe personally, that uh, we are losing a lot of that diversity in our food supply namely in produce. We're seeing a reduction in the type and the varieties of produce yeah. that we're eating. And that's obviously going hand in hand with these monocultural or uh, pseudo monocultural systems that are growing. So we have to look very closely at the type of produce that we're eating, the type of produce that we're growing and promoting more of that diversity of foods. And that goes right back again to local, you know, that was always a hot thing, you know, for the last decade or so, but local, really bringing it into the indigenous plants and produce that we can incorporate into our diets. I, I'm going to love to pick that up with you because that, that is a, that is a big concern. We're, we're looking for the sector to benefit, but we, we, we cannot go down that monocultural route, route as it has done with the, with, with certain elements. So, so, so John, just con conscious of, uh, of the time. I want to give a big shout out to you because of some of the other work that you do. I love your LinkedIn profile, fresh produce, sustainability leader and disruptor historian writer speaker talk about the history element talk about what you do for the, for the benefit of the sector on the on the history of the sector please yes yeah, so that's another uh, i guess <laughs> identity i wear uh away from my full-time job so i i host the uh history of fresh produce podcast and really it's a passion that stems from my personal passion for history i've always loved history uh anything from the ancient period into medieval renaissance modern the whole gamut and uh, obviously produce i love produce working in this industry for over 16 years and so it was it was a passion project to combine those two things and look it kind of goes back to everything that we we're just talking about understanding your past understand what a, whether it's produce or just general culture and society understanding the past yeah. really allows you to appreciate where you are today and how you can proceed going forward to better and try not to repeat some of the same mistakes that things have happened in the past. So, you know, when we when we do those stories on the podcast, we're obviously telling stories through a histor uh, through a lens of produce, historical events. You know, we've done things like the Titanic through the lens of produce or the spice trade wars, which really? we'll, I just recorded. So, it's uh, I th I think I think it's been it's been a lot of fun. I think people have found it interesting as well. Uh, just have a totally different perspective on history. I know history can sometimes sound very dry and boring to a lot of people, but uh, it can be very exciting. And there's a lot of different ways to tell it, and we can learn a lot of from it. Excellent. I'm, I'm going to tag you in uh, on, on this uh, on this poster so that uh, even more people can can uh, follow your your sublime work on on the podcast side. John, we very much look forward to seeing you at the Global Produce and Floral Show 2024 in Atlanta next week. Travel safely out there, and we look forward to seeing you on your stand or walking about. Yes, of course. Looking forward to seeing you, Max. Excellent. See you then. Bye bye.